We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is our salvation, life and resurrection, to whom we are saved and delivered. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today is the feast of the exaltation of the cross. We call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. For the many times we fail perhaps to respond to Jesus saying, if you want to come after me, take up your cross and come and follow me. For all failures and sins in this regard, we say, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world, Receive. Seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race, grant, we pray, that we who have known his mystery on earth may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the book of Numbers. With their patience, worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in the desert, where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people, so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take these serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole, and if any who have been bitten look at it, they will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, do not forget the works of the Lord. Hearken, my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter mysteries from of old. While he slew them, they sought him and inquired after God again, remembering that God was their rock and the Most High God their Redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths and lied to him with their tongues. Though their hearts were not satisfied toward though their hearts were not steadfast toward him, nor were they faithful to his covenant. But he, being merciful, forgave their sin and destroyed them not. Often he turned back his anger and let none of his wrath be roused. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
We adore you, Christ, and we bless you, because by your cross you have redeemed the world. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So that everyone who believes in him may have life eternal. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, today's first reading, and there was salvation. So too is the Son of Man lifted up. And not just lifted up in an ordinary way, but in and to the cross. The total kenosis or emptiness of Christ to this second reading. And then mentioned again in today's gospel. Then what? What is it with this lifted up on the cross? Now Jesus explained or explains and makes it very, very explicit. So that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And then, that is not just repeated once. So that everyone who believes in him the following paragraph after that. For well, God so loved the world, that's John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him shall have life eternal. It's repeated. What is repeated? Believing in him may have eternal life and then repeat it again so that everyone who believe in him might not perish but might have eternal life what is another word for believing Following. Because sometimes when you say faith, belief, it's abstract. But when we say being obedient or following Christ, it's less abstract. It's more into action. It's more of my deeds 
corresponding to the way of following being Christ. This is faith. This is trust. Now, what happens when we obey? What happens when we follow Christ? The soul becomes more and more healthy, less and less sick. And why is this important? Because again, and you've heard this many times, the salvation of souls is the supreme law. The last canon law of the church, 1752. Again, salus animarum suprema lex. This is the supreme law because of what? Because this is the core mission of the church. Then what? We ask the question. What is that word soul? Well, our interiority, our disposition, our condition, our situation. I can be good without, but how is my integrity, my wholeness, my oneness with God within? That's why we say a contract heart, a purified spirit, a purified soul. Now, having understood that this is what soul is all about. How do we know what lies in the soul, in your soul, in mine? How do you know? How do I know? How do we know what lies in the soul? And the answer is, we know it. When there is love and joy and patience, when there is kindness, goodness, long suffering, like Saint Padre Pio, like Louisa Picarita, mildness. When there is faith and modesty and self-control and chastity, purity, what have I just mentioned to you? The twelve fruits of the Spirit. It's not just enough to have gifts from the Spirit. We know that the seven gifts of the Spirit Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, fear of the Lord. Great. But what good will the gifts be without fruits? We just had that last Saturday by their fruits, you will know them. And so therefore, what lies in the soul, a healthy soul, are the fruits of the Spirit. Nothing more, nothing less. What are the fruits of the Spirit again? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, long suffering, mildness, faith, modesty, 
self-control, chastity. This is according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Now, when what lies in the soul are these? Pride, anger, lust, envy, greed, gluttony, sloth, I word for slot is laziness or self-centeredness or acidia. We've heard that word acidia when we had a 40-day Lenten retreat. What are these? The seven deadly sins. What are those seven deadly sins? They are the foundational, fundamental, basic. They are the wellsprings of all the other sins. Where in all the other sins, big or small, rise from, surface out, emanate from all these seven deadly sins. And when I have those, or some of those, you know, we know that what lies within that makes my soul not healthy but sick. Now what, 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 how come we have come, uh, we, we are thinking of this? Because again, Jesus says, everyone who believes in, in him, meaning the Son of Man, may have eternal life. And then, Compounded with, he doubled down by saying, everyone who believes in him might not perish. Meaning, believing in and for the way of the cross. And this is exaltation. Why? We lift up, we exalt. This is el triunfo de la cruz, the triumph what the world considers as defeat. Why exaltation? Why trial? Because it takes one way of it. Because in and through the process, you and I will be in the struggle. Struggle for what? To bring us, our soul more and more healthy with the 12 fruits of the Spirit. It takes a struggle to become more and more healthy to counter what makes the soul sick, meaning the seven de deadly sins and all the ramifications of all the seven, seven deadly sins. Because the seven deadly sins are the sources of all the other sins. And so therefore, what lies in the soul? The answer is pure and simple. Love, kindness, peace, patience, faith, goodness, or, or rather kindness, goodness, long-suffering, mildness, faith, modesty, self-control, chastity. Easy now. But yet, when we struggle, we lift ourselves up. The cross. That's why we have today the exaltation. This is the triumph of the cross in our lives. When Jesus says, take up your cross, we become triumphant, el triunfo de la cruz. Because we exalt, we lift up our soul from the depths of the wrath of deadly sins to the gifts of the Spirit from death to life. 
This is how we should understand the exhortation of It is a battle. It is what we have known for so long time a spiritual battle. It is war. And this is the hardest war that needs to be fought. All the wars, all, all the wars in the world, in all the histories of nations, ever since the what is called the written documents or documentations. They are relatively easy compared to this kind of war. In fact, all those wars come out, are effects of the sickness of the soul. When the soul is healthy, the world is at peace. When the soul is healthy, it's not just you and I, everyone will live in what? In love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, long-suffering, mildness, faith, modesty, self-control, chastity, the gifts of the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, it's not, 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 not the gift, the fruits of the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, it's not enough to have gifts. As we ask the question, where is the beef? From the gospel, or in the spirit of the gospel, where are the fruits? Please rise. We continue to pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. All cardinals, bishops, priests, deacons, religious men and women, the lay people, and all those engaging especially in whatever form ministry in the church, that even through the exaltation, the lifting up of themselves in this spiritual battle, that they will grow more and more in the spirit, the gifts of the spirit, so that each one's soul become, becomes healthy as everyone is sent for the mission of salvation of Jesus. For this we pray to the Lord. And we pray for the healing of our world, for the conversion of humankind, for a great comeback of humanity to Jesus in and through the cross. For God's great harvest of souls, for this we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who are dying or are sick, in whatever form that their pains and trials, difficulties and sufferings will bring them one to the redemptive sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. In view of eternal life, for this we pray to the Lord. We pray for the faithful departed, for their eternal rest. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray in particular for um, the eternal rest of Teresa Alves. For her we pray to the Lord. Lord No, that's today's Tuesday. We pray for the eternal rest of Rob, Robert Tinasa, or rather Sidney Guardado, that's Tuesday. For his eternal rest, for him we pray to the Lord. And we raise to God all our intentions in this holy sacrifice of the night. For all our intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord all these heavenly Father, we ask for Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord, our God of all creation, for to you, goodness, we have received. The bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for to you goodness we have received. The wine we will create through the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spirit. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> may this oblation, O Lord, which on the altar of the cross cancel the offenses of the whole world. Cleanse us, we pray, for all of all our sins, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with us with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly white and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you place the salvation of the human race on the wood of the cross, so that where death arose, light might again spring forth, and the evil one who conquered her, who conquered on a tree, might likewise on a tree be conquered through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions, adore, and power stream ball before you, heaven and virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices we pray join with us. In humble praise as we all acclaim. Holy, holy, You are indeed holy, Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for our consecration, that they may become the body and blood 
of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at his command, we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Titus, Ah, you eat, ah, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. For in a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Taste, all you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the Lord, for by your cross and resurrection. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit of Christ. May he make of us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your, of, with your elects. So that we may obtain, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, the blessed spouse, and with, with the blessed apostles and, all, and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in the presence we rely for and failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity the appearance of the church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. You, uh, to, your, to our departed brothers and sisters of the wall who, have, who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world 
all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await a blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who saved your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, bound the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever in heaven. The peace of the Lord be with you always. A new day, quit all in speak out Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Please be seated. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself, says the Lord. Let us pray. Having been nourished by your by holy banquet, we beseech you, Lord Jesus Christ, to bring those who are redeemed by the by the wood of your life-giving cross to the glory of the resurrection, who live and reign forever. The Lord be with you. And with Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing as we pray the solemn blessing in ordinary time. May God bless you with every, every heavenly blessing. Make you always holy and pure in His sight. Pour out an abundance upon you in the riches of his glory and teach you with the words of truth and may he instruct you in the gospel of salvation and never endow you with fraternal charity for Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ and continue to be one in the spirit of Jesus as you are sent for his mission. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and the hour of our death. Saint Michael the Archangel, we are protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and be humble forever. And do the heart of the heavenly hosts.